basically bottom line is by cutting off access to Western markets and Western money, we were able to break communism in the Soviet Union. Fabulous. But now you're That's sounding cool. a new alarm, and the new alarm is twofold. The Chinese communists are accessing Western markets and Western money, and that's a problem. And then the second aspect of it is, with that money, they're doing some pretty bad things. Can you tell us a little about that? Well, the, the numbers are much more disturbing. As you know, China is a, an economic juggernaut, the likes of which the Soviets never knew, thank goodness. Uh, the, the situation we have here is in the new era, it's really about stocks and bonds, namely our capital markets that, is the, that are the keys to the kingdom. And not it's only not that, Western, though, not only that, they're actually uh, forcing some investment through our MSCI All Country World Index, aren't they? Yes. Uh, look, you have, you have as much as a trillion nine hundred billion dollars in our stock market. You have another trillion or so uh, that we're exposed as Americans in their bond market, buying Chinese government bonds. Uh, particularly those of their state-owned enterprises. And so we're already talking about circa $3 trillion of financing that we're providing uh, to the Communist Party and the Chinese uh, totalitarian government. So this is, this is a huge problem, and they're doing it in many different ways, including having our index providers like MSCI, uh, like FTSE Russell, like Dow Jones, S&P, uh, Bloomberg, Barclays, others who are buying hundreds of Chinese companies right out of mainland exchanges, circumventing SEC regulations and disclosure requirements and the like, and are stuffing them into indexes which have trillions of dollars of funds under management that are automatically forced in effect to buy those stocks the soon as they appear <coughs> in these indexes. And that is a huge problem because it means that every time a Chinese company, including bad actors like the People's Liberation Army or human rights abusers, and we can go over some of who those bad actors are, but believe me, they're there. And as soon as they appear <clears throat> in an index, scores of millions of Americans automatically have them, in effect, inserted into their investment portfolios and their retirement accounts. Well, now, wait a minute, Roger. I've been told, everybody's been told over and over that the Chinese are funding us, but what you're telling me is that we've been funding them. That's correct. I mean, they have $1.1 trillion of our T-bills. Uh, by the way, if they ever sold them all, it would be not the calamity that people have predicted. It would be 50 or 100 basis points for us in interest rate rise. They don't have leverage, just to put that, put that myth to bed. But they are funding us to the tune of about a trillion one. In turn, they're taking out of our markets, both stocks and bonds, uh, multiples of that amount. And they plan to put trillions of dollars more into our market in terms of the exposure of American investors in the next two to three years. So much so, Kevin, that the American people could well wake up one morning, that 150, 180 million Americans who are in our capital markets, and, and find out to their chagrin and even horror that they're holding 15, 17, 22, 25% of their entire investment portfolios are in Chinese securities. That's the day that we have a true crisis. That's the day we're in checkmate and we have that, those 100 plus million Americans, maybe 150, as many as 180, that are in their possession is a vested financial interest to ensure that penalties and sanctions levied against China no longer take place because of fear that they're going to damage the value of their retirement accounts and their investment portfolios, Boy, almost irrespective conflicting. of how severe China's offenses are. And that's the day that we have to avoid, and we have to do it now.